Welcome to Lakeland Community College. My name is Mary Urbis. I am the gallery director and the exhibition curator for From Woman 15, created by women, of women, and about women, as the gallery celebrates Women's History Month. The show is open now through April 1st, 2022. We are having an artist reception and in-person reception on Sunday, March 13th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. We are collaborating with Lakeland's Women's Center. They will be hosting their Women of Achievement Awards the same day on Sunday, March 13th. Their festivities start at 2 p.m. You can always go to our website for information, lakelandcc.edu forward slash gallery. That will give you, tell you about the different shows that are coming up. There's an Arts at Lakeland brochure that tells you about all the arts and concerts and theaters because we do have a vibrant spring concert schedule coming up right now. And the last thing is the gallery is open uh, Monday through Saturday. So Monday through Friday, we're open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Saturdays, we are open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Sundays, we are closed. So today, what I'm going to be doing is giving a walkthrough of the show. But what I did differently this year is I featured the work of Kathy Skerritt. Kathy Skerritt is a local artist who lost her battle with cancer recently. And I just wanted to give homage to her as an artist and all the people that she connected with spiritually and with her art. And I first met Kathy when she had a studio in, in article down in the Waterloo Arts District. And um, so what, it, what we decided to do with the help of uh, Kelly Pontoni, Kelly Pontoni is um, Kathy's personal archivist. So I worked with Kelly and we picked out pieces that would create a mini retrospective of Kathy's work from, all, from over the years. The work is not in chronological order, but on the tags, if the information as far as the year it was created is on that tags. Like I said, this first open area of the gallery is dedicated to the work of Kathy Skerritt. Uh, this first piece is a self-portrait taken at her farm studio in Pennsylvania, dated 2021. It's a photograph. These next two pieces are from her protoplasmic display series from 1978. Um, the top one is display one, the bottom one is, is display two. These are mixed media on canvas. Oop, the top piece actually was done in 1979, and the one below it is 2018. So you can see that sometimes there are uh, different um, formats, different color combinations, different compositions and symbols that come up in, with Kathy's work. And she does a lot of things with, with biology and cells and, and all that. So this next piece is called Cell, appropriately, and this is from 2007. We have uh, three pieces that are kind of like a, a triptych, and this is some blue thing on top, some blue thing too, and then untitled with nine circles. These, again, these are all the pieces you're seeing are mixed media on canvas. Now this is the piece that I chose for the postcard, Life Force Descending number two from 2016. Part, I mean, I don't know if this will pick up on the, um, the video, but it's, you've got these, you're using, she's using complementary colors, which is giving you an incredible dramatic um, impact. You've got the red with the green, you've got the yellow with the kind of the purple in there. And, and it, I don't know if you can, if you can do like a close up, but the, the forms in the center, she uses like this modeling paste. She does this thing so that when she paints it and it dries, it starts to crack and pull, pull together. And so that's how you get these lovely little cracks. And, and, I just, and I just wanted something bright for the women's show because of it being springtime, it being March, and we're all, we're all kind of done with uh, all the gray and, and white snow and, and dirty, dirty soot in the streets. But, but anyhow, so that's, that's one of the reasons why I chose this piece, because of the dramatic impact and the colors. This is another example of how Kathy will take a color palette or a certain composition and do it and then revisit it years later. The first one on the left is called Evolution One. It's from 2003. The one on the right is Evolution Two and that's from 2010. And it's very similar color palette, but when you see it up close, 
you can see the differences and nuances. And, and I say this every time I do a tour, if you can come see the exhibition, please do so. It's always better to see the work up close, in personal with your own eyes than even though I have a fantastic videography crew with Sam and Phil, um, it's still the experience of, of, of the emotions and the energies that are emulating from the work. And that's what Kathy was all about. She was a very f spiritual person. She, she spent a lot of time meditating and, um, and some of these works are just, are just beautiful and quiet. And like I said, it's an homage to Kathy as an artist. This next piece is called Untitled, Red, Black, and Yellow. Again, uh, mixed media on canvas from 2008. And it's interesting because it's got the layers of color and it's got glitter, and that's just not something I think of when I think of Kathy's work. So I really do want to thank Kelly for helping um, me select a nice cross-section of work from different periods, di different series that Kathy has done over the years. She was quite a prolific artist, and her loss to the, the art community is quite, quite deep but she's, she's up in the great studio in the sky. Okay, this next piece is called Wetlands, the Dominion of Ohio, 2018. And then to finish off this room with, with Kathy's piece, this is a triptych called Spinal Typography Series 1, number one from 2018. This is called Transfiguration, and this is another one of those pieces, the, the incredible um, textures that she has from layering of the, of, of the materials and how the paint, you know, pooled in some of the crevices and all. So this is, again, one of these pieces that you just kind of, although I don't encourage you, you just kind of want to run your hand up and down the surface because it's so cool. Again, I'm going a little out of sequence here, but I wanted to show all of Kathy's work together. What you're seeing now is the Breast Chronicles. Uh, Kathy's, her life changed in 2013 with her diagnosis of aggressive breast cancer. While preparing for a double mastectomy and chemotherapy, therapy, she used her iPad to express her journey. She displayed her pain and showed her amazing bravery and strength. It is the last project before she trans into, transitioned into the light in September 2021. Kathy wanted this message to spread the awareness of breast cancer and connect with many who have traveled the same road. Take a journey through these digital drawings which are printed on acrylic. All work displayed can also be ordered in larger sizes. A portion of the proceeds will be given to the Artist Archives of the Western Reserve to help a woman of color to be archived. And this is also the first time that Kathy, well, she can now, it was able to see the collection of the Breast Chronicles all together on one wall. So um, it's just, it's a, it's a powerful wall. And then on the bottom right corner, on the floor there, you're gonna see Kathy's trademark uh, red, red tennis shoes. And then the, um, the talisman necklace that one of her healers had given to her to, to hold on to when she was meditating, when she was waiting in chemotherapy, and just to help keep her centered. This is another piece by Kathy Skerritt. This is an artist book, which is collage, watercolor, markers, and fabric. This is on loan from the Artist Archives of the Western Reserve, and thank you very much um, for letting us show this uh, accordion book. And then what, what you're going to be seeing now is just a little kind of melange of different pieces Kathy has created. You've got, you know, a drawing of a tree from the 60s. You've got the a mitten crayon piece that she did when she was a child. Then she, she did this uh, silk piece and she said she, wa she wants my blue sky day back. And this is kind of her commentary on how her illness kind of took over her life. But she would get it, she'd be in remission, it got her again, she'd be in remission. So she truly is a warrior and what she, was, she has survived over the years. And then on the bottom shelf, we've got some drawings, we've got some pastel drawings with horses and just pieces from her sketchbook. We just wanted to give 
you viewers, the public that came to see the pieces, just a little insight into the workings of, of Kathy's mind and how, she, and how she worked in so many different medias from the, you know, the drawings and very graphic pen and ink to painted, painted fabric um, and then the softness of pastels. Okay, we are back in the main open space of the gallery. What will catch your eye is the minute you walk into this room is the paper mache and mixed media sculpture by Columbus artist Lori Van Balen. This piece is called What If? Um, it's obviously a piece that deals with the immigration issues that are happening in the border. And she talked about what if, you know, what if we as compassionate, rational human beings were to refuse to be silent bystanders to such immoral acts of forced family separation? What if we chose instead to speak up, to rise up and empower one another as responsible citizens in this world? What if we were to join together in a commitment to uphold inclusion, equality, and justice for all people? So this is, is quite a power for peace. And again, this is another one of those pieces that I hope that you can come into the gallery and see the, the, the work up close. Some of the details that you'll notice when you come up to these pieces, first of all, that they, they are paper mache and how she, we, how she purposely used certain kinds of newspaper and print to make the fabric of the, the woman versus the, the camouflage of the border guard. And this is just layers and layers of paper and glue and um, different things to pull them together and how she was able to convey a message without without being super detailed you're not you don't see every single um, fingernail every hair whatever you're, you're but you're 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 getting the idea you can see what's happening the look on the mother's face the child and and the child is either running from the mother or the mother is hoping that she's reunited again but like I said if you can come and check this out this is a very a very powerful piece on so many levels Okay, we're in the inside room right now. This is a bronze piece by artist Lisa Kenyon, who's from Cleveland area. This is called Deep Green and is cast bronze. And next to it is one of her paintings. Um, most of us are not familiar with Lisa's work, but she just had a one-person show at Stella's Art Gallery in Willoughby in the Annex Gallery, and she premiered some of these beautiful pieces. This is called Sound in Water, and it's oil on canvas. And it's got the dolphin and the little iconography and the underwater, which is just, I just love it. I, lo I would like to dive into that painting and go swimming with that, that creature right now. The next five pieces is, are actually done by one of Lakeland's visual arts faculty members. This is Grace Suminen. This is a series that's called Wood Shingles. And the first piece is called Curve. And all of these pieces are acrylic, latex, fabric, and wood shingles. So like I said, the first piece is called Curve. To the right, the next piece is, is called Edge. The one in the middle is crack, and I just love how that fabric kind of folded up. It almost looks like she took a palette knife and scraped it on the, on, a, on the paint, and it kind of like rippled like that. Then the next one, which is a great dramatic um, with the uh, complementary colors of the orange and the turquoise blue, is waves. And the last piece of this series is called Green Between Green. These next two pieces are is done by Lorelei Skizenta. This one is called A Sunday at Aunt Gertie's. It's photo emulsion, acrylic ink on wood. And the next one is called A Sunday After Church. Same thing, photo emulsion, acrylic ink on wood. I believe Lorelei shared a story with me that she found some old family photos and that's the inspiration for these two paintings to, to talk about love between family members and, and give homage to her um, relatives. Okay, this wall is uh, work by Leslie Discon Arian. Leslie is a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate, MNI. Um, this, this series is called Color Has Volume and No Unnecessary Noise, one, two, three, four, but it, it goes four, three, two, one, the way we've hung them on the wall. And these are mixed media, screen print, collage, pencil, and acrylic on paper. Okay, this is a wall of Beth Nash's work. These are acrylic and collage um, on board. 
So the first one is called Sleeper. The second is Stripes. That one is acrylic collage and mixed media. And then the third is called Blindfold, which is acrylic on panel. This sculptural piece is done by Indiana artist Patricia Hecker, transforming pain into art. She uses rubber stamps and paint. Uh, she's got uh, artisan made glass beads. She has wooden beads that are painted. She collaborates with her husband, John Hecker, and they call their company Tattoo Dreams. And um, this is just nice for her to see a little bit more of a sculptural piece. And in the time that she created it and sent it to us, she sold it to one of her collectors. So um, this piece is gonna be, I'll be putting a red dot on this piece. This work is, was created by Chesterlin artist Jenny Mendez. You're more familiar with her ceramic work, but she just in the past few years started doing watercolor paintings, which I just find to be another extension of, how, of her illustrative style and how she tells a story with her work. The first piece on the left is called Ball Lightning Symmetry. And like I said, these are watercolor on paper. The one in the middle is called Ten Spirals. And the, the right piece is called Adama. Again, these are watercolors. And then she did these, these three, these plates. I just, I'm a big fan of her work. You know, if you, if you follow me on Facebook, you see me sharing her work all the time. And I just really enjoy the work that she's been doing. The first platter on the left is called Golden Light. The middle piece is called Inhale. And then the third piece is called Girls Riding Elephants. And she's got the, the twins, the girl twins, for those, those of you, again, who follow me or know anything about me, I have a twin, a twin brother. But, and so there's something I find very compelling about twin, twin imagery and mirror imagery, which is what she kind of um, you know, incorporates into these plates. And then what I did is just because I wanted to show some of her other pieces, her smaller pieces, her lower end pieces, we've got a blue, you know, blue shroud rectangular plate on this pedestal. And then we've got two different bowls, you know, with red background, you know, with, with animal shapes and bird shapes. And, and then we, I also included some of her um, hearts. I've got this um, attraction to red, black, and white, red, black, yellow, and white. So I just find that the dramatic illustrations that she puts onto her pieces are very, very beautiful, very inspiring. And like so much of the work, these pieces tell a story. For those of you who have been following this show over the years, you should recognize the very distinctive work of Jamie Zentz. Jamie is also a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate. This, she works in pencil and oil on birch wood. She selects a piece of wood and she says that she lets it talk to her, it tells her how to frame the composition. And then after she renders these exquisite figures and faces and the, and the expression and just how she renders the figure, and then she'll go into the background um, of the wood grain and pick up a design and kind of draw into it. So they have a very ethereal, very surreal, very magical quality to them. So like I said, the first one on the left is Canopy. The middle one is called Quiet in the Storm. And then the third one is called Collared in Coral. And, this, and she had a great um, experience with these pieces. She put them out there on social media and she sold all three of them before they even arrived in the show. So congratulations, Jamie, on having your work. Um, sell. I know some of your fans will be bummed out that there's nothing available this year to, for them to purchase, but some two other collectors really got some gems of pieces. Okay, these next two pieces are done by Sarah Curry. These are gouache flocking on panel. The one on the left is called Sasha, and the one on the right is called Nina. And it's just an incredible process where she creates the painting, create, puts a frisket over it, and then she flocks it. Because when she gave me this work last year, I just thought it was that new, deep, dark, darkest, dark, 10 plus value paint. And I realized that it's flocking. So it gives it a velvety um, touch to it, which is actually, which is quite sensual and, and just a beautiful texture. Now these three pieces in the center, these were created by Sarah Warman Lane. 
Small world category, it is her father who was my printmaking instructor while I was a student at the Art Institute and I minored in printmaking. So when I saw her painting on these Altoid tins and she was working with um, the Murray Hill Group, I think it was, and I just wrote her and said, would you like to give me pieces for the show? And then we made the connection as far as who her dad was. So the top piece is called Gazelle, the middle piece is Trixie, and the third is Naomi. And what she does is she goes to these, you know, um, she'll either attend online and she'll paint, she'll use the, the one side of the tin as her palette, and then she paints these beautiful little intimate portraits into the Altoid tin. And then she closes them up and they're protected. And I just thought it was a great way to present the work. This wall is the work of Trisha Common. And these are oil on ca canvas. Trisha has a studio down in the Murray Hill School in Little Italy, and she is one of the premier portrait painters in Northeast Ohio. She uh, just recently passed on her business, the Common Art Shops, to her, her kids. And she owned the business where you would go to all the major um, amusement parks, and you'd have a caricature, caricature created or a um, you know, or, or another, a cut silhouette done of you, and, and that, that was her business. And so she has encouraged artists for decades. I think, she's, I think she just retired after 50 years in the business. And we talked about how many different artists she has nurtured and what they went on to become. So this first piece is called Moroccan Pose. The piece in the middle is called Best Friends 3, and I don't know, for those of you guys keeping score, she had, she, I had shown a piece of, of hers called Best Friends, and it was included in one, uh, in, on the back of one of the From Woman um, postcards. So it was kind of nice to, to, to show this piece, and you know, that because of, of how one part of the original series was here years ago. And then the third one is a, it's kind of a nice icy kind of color palette called Beth's Wings. So, and Trisha does a, you know, does a lot of live um, model um, painting in her studio. She teaches her classes and, and so it's a different experience when you're dealing with the model right in front of you and watching the, the way the, the quality of the light changes and just the interaction of the models. This piece is done by Gail Trunick. Gail is a mixed media assemblage artist. She creates some of the elements in the clay. If you ever have a chance to go to her studio, she kind of lives in the middle field area, go. She purchased a train caboose, which is in, on her property. The train caboose has a, is the showroom to show her work. She made a little um, like six seat movie theater in the outbuilding next to it and then she has an incredible studio with all these little cubby holes where she has pieces parts and, and she has one drawer that's nothing but handles not something might be spoons and and it just it just was an incredible experience to actually go to her studio see what she's inspired with, with and then see the pieces that she produces and that to me is is the, is some of the most enjoyable time I have getting to know the artist seeing um, their studio. It tells me a whole lot more about them when I see how they work and how they, what they surround themselves with and how they, they, how they get inspired and how sometimes it's incorporated into their work. Okay, this is a new grouping of work by Teresa Yondo. Teresa actually was a Lakeland graduate years and years ago, and she also taught clay here for a brief time also. These are pieces in her, her new series. This is called The Sculptural and Functional Planter for Miniature Succulents. And so the lar she's got the large piece, and then she's got three smaller pieces, which are, which are bud vases, which are closed up. So if you wanted to put something in them, um, a natural element, you can. And these are, you know, high fired in her kiln and they do hold water. Okay, we have another piece of Gales. Again, this is one of those pieces you need to see all the different sides because it's called Creativity Killer. And all the things that un unfortunately we hear from people who, who are, tr they think they're supporting us, but then they say these things. You know, they call you, you know, you're too old, quit daydreaming, curiosity killed the cat, stupid idea, you'll never amount to anything. This is a, not the way it's supposed to be, grow up. You, you're not talented enough. So I think this is a great 
homage to the artists out there but to please don't give up please if you need if you if you're inclined and you have a story to tell through your art please don't let anyone discourage you from telling your story from sharing what you're thinking and what you're doing okay this is another pedestal full of Teresa Yando's work where she's working with the mini succulent series and what she did is she went and snagged some succulents and filled some of the little pots there so that she could, you know, kind of have the natural element with the reproduced or the created um, out of the ceramic and glazed. And she's got one in the, in the front there where she's actually using canthal wire that she fired in with the piece to give it some, uh, some extra... Um, you know, texture, and we talked about how cool it would be if she could start doing pieces where the smallest piece is as tall as the largest piece here, and now she's actually working on a new series, and she said she's just so excited to, you know, have created this new body of work for my show, and how it has opened up, you know, her creativity in her mind, and she said she could work on this series for months now with different shapes and, and glazes and surface decoration. This is another piece by Gail Trunick, From Mouth to Ear, that's clay and metal. I just thought it was a quirky little piece. It's like her take on the game of telephone. What you say to one person is not necessarily what you've said. They hear it differently and, and comprehend it, and then suddenly when they re-speak re it or translate it, it's not always anywhere near what it started as. But I just thought it was a kind of an interesting contemplative piece. Okay, this is a quilt by Susan Shy entitled Paula, Five of Wooden Spoons or Wands in the Kitchen Tarot. It's a textile art quilt, whole cloth painting done freehand and airbrush and paint markers. Uh, this ironically is another piece that is, was dedicated to a woman, Paula, who was a friend of Susie's that passed away from cancer also. So, but what's What's so evocative and compelling about Susan's work is she incorporates her journal writings into her quilts. And, she, and this, in this one, you've got, you know, um, Greta Thunberg and Alice Walker and, and different um, people that you'll um, recognize. You know, the, woman, the winged fi picture, the figure on the right says, pr you know, pray for kindness and healing. So um, save the earth, lend your hand to the, to the earth. So it's this, she likes to insert political messages into her pieces, but she also wants to um, promote love and equality and, and how we need to work together in this country to, for equality, for equal rights, for voting, for women's health care. You know, like I said, this is a, some of these pieces are a little bit more political based. You know, they're, they're, the women have a chance to talk about issues that they deal with and, and maybe it's something that you as the viewer are not familiar with. So, but the, again, this is another one of those pieces that if you can come on campus and see the work and read the, the text that's written into the pieces, I think it's a, it's a quite uh, moving, moving experience. Okay, these next two oil paintings on canvas are done by Judy Takis. Uh, they deal with, um, you know, body images and what some of the um, things that women are, are dealing with these days. You know, the one on the left is My Body, My Decision, and the one on the right is Trust Women, and she's depicting the, the clothes hanger. And some people might be put off by this image, but I think it's important for the women and young women who are growing up now that we, we spent years defending our right to have an abortion, and um, those rights are being challenged again. And, uh, and they have, some of these younger women have no idea what we went through, what women used to go through having abortions in back alleys, and that's why there's the depiction and the inclusion of the, the hangers because that's what was used. And, and I don't want to get too much into the political part about this, but it's, to me it's about choice. And we all, you know, it's my body, my decision. If you don't want to have an abortion, don't get one. But, but give me the, the right to choose. Okay, this piece on the pedestal is done by Gwen Waite. It's called Dirty Knees, Look at These. And some, the, the pieces that she gave me this year has to deal with 
her experiences is in, with racism as being uh, Asian American, half American and half Asian descent. And um, she's got Hawaiian in her blood too. So this, like I said, the first piece was called Dirty Knees, Look at These. There is a little rhyme that, that, that kids used to say that, that is very, very hurtful. And she just kind of wanted to kind of focus in on this thing. You can't say that anymore. You can't be so, you have to be a little bit more conscientious. And then the pieces above her are two more pieces of Gail Trunick's, a little smaller scale. And these are ceramic. The one on the left is inner flights and you have the, the figure looking up and you've got the little bird inside. And then the one in the back is called Heavy Thoughts. And yes, I admit the reason I picked it is because it's got the lava rock coming out of its head. But it's just, it's just, it's just that whole dark cloud, living under a dark cloud that I just felt very, I was a drawn to, pun intended, I, that I was, and that's why I selected that piece when I went to Gwen's studio. And then this next piece is another piece by Gwen Wade called mm, mm Good, and it's found, art, found object assemblage. And just the things that she finds, the, the fact that she's got all the ice picks that are in the color palette of the red. She's got the Asian figure in, um, you know, the, the can and the chains and the sprockets and just the names on the, the ice picks. Um, and of course, I haven't really mentioned it before, but look at those shadows. Those shadows are a gift from the different lights hitting it. So, so sometimes I just, it's fun for me as the curator when I design the visual storyline of, of the show, you know, that um, when I see how the, the light hits it, it just kind of makes me smile. It's an added bonus. This is a sculptural glass mosaic piece created by Lisa Rushman. This is called You Can't Be Both. What she did is, is these are actually two, two, three pieces of her clothing that was her bra that she um, mosaiced with different colors of iridescent um, glass mosaic. And then she put the, the broken pieces, the shards inside. And what she's also done is, um, and I don't want to give too much away, she has, she's put the little tiles with letters on it and she's put certain words that she has um, incised into the piece, incorporated in the bra and the shoes themselves. But I don't want to give too much away. I want you to come and see these pieces because some of the words are not meant to be overt, but when you see them, I mean, the, the one on the top is a little bit more pretty, a little bit more, um, you know, complimentary, while the one, the, the shoes on the bottom are, have a little bit different connotation. But those shoes, girl, these are beautiful. I would wear these shoes, although those heels would probably, I'd probably twist my ankle and break my neck, but just the iridescent glass and the different tonalities of the iridescent glass and the gold on the pumps. And again, these were, these were shoes that Lisa used to wear. And, and then inside she, you know, she put the broken glass and, and just the, the details. And, and it just, it's a nice, again, piece that talks about, um, you know, that, that you can't have both, that people want, they want a woman to be feminine, but they don't want her to be virginal. Or, and, um, but like I said, it's, it's, there's some beautiful glass and the way the light hits it, I think this is a, just a very beautiful striking piece. Then we have another piece by Gwen Wade, and this is called Hapa. And Hapa means half. This is not white, white. And this uh, hapa is a Hawaiian word. And um, again, she's used the, the ice picks and she's used the fact that, you know, non-white and then depicting her skin as being yellow because, you know, she's Asian, part Hawaiian. And then this last piece of Gail Trunix, this is called Woman as a Punching Bag. Because again, just dealing with, um, you know, domestic violence and how, yet, yes, men are also uh, victims of domestic violence, but um, this is because this is the woman show and this is what this artist depicts. So it, it is a, you know, clay found object where she created the face and the arms and then she found, um, you know, a lace up punching bag. This is another piece created by Lisa Kenyon. It's called Night Garden. It is cast bronze and fabricated steel. 
This is a piece that she just created for her show that she had over at Stella's Gallery in the Annex Gallery. And it's just the, the textures she was able to create on her, the natural elements. And then she's got the, the goddess faces with the, with the um, elements coming out of the top. It's just a, it's a, and just the different surfaces and the different patinas that she was able to um, incorporate into this piece. It's very organic and, and so very delicate, but then you realize that it's, it's bronze, so it's a little bit more impervious even though she's depicting decaying leaves and fauna. Okay, this is a piece by Stanka Kordic. Stanka is a, a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate. This is called Birds on Blue. It's oil on panel. And this, this piece kind of epitomizes the part of the theme of the show that developed quite organically for me, where so many artists are using the iconography and symbolism of birds. I don't know if it's because we want to take flight and leave where we're going. We want to leave, leave this planet and go to a better place. We want to free our minds from the everyday world and the, and the vi virus and the stress of everything. And this is just a beautiful painting with a beautiful um, surface. And her work is very ethereal very ephemeral looking. The next three pieces were created by Chagrin Falls artist Maggie Brown. These are actually cut paper collages. So the first piece is called Slay, Red Wolf's Maiden. One in the middle is called Telegraphic Trajectory, Snowy Owl's Maiden. And I've, I don't know, I've been so attracted to, to owls lately. You'll see some more owls in the next room. I just love how the, the paper that she chooses and how she's able to create the, the impression of um, the feathers without rendering the feathers. So she's using the type of the paper that she's using. And now she's starting to you in, inject more um, watercolor in the pieces, which is a little bit more evident with this third piece called Searching for the Country Star in the Moonlight, Red, -tail, Red Tailed Hawk's Maiden. And again, these are cut paper collage, and then she uses like old barn lathing to do her frame. So you've got this nice rustic frame that's in um, contrast to the cut paper. Okay, these next three pieces were created by Annie Peters. And again, this is another example of look at, look at these beautiful shadows on the wall that are being cast. This first piece is called Waiting and it's found natural objects in wire. So the fact that she was able to find a small branch and it looks like it's sprouting and putting it into the wood. Um, Annie's work is usually very ecological in, in scope. She does a lot of things. She's, she's all about the woman as a goddess and protecting the earth and honoring the earth. This large piece on the wall is called Spirit Trap. It's called, it's with wood, vine, and sinew. And again, it's kind of like a woven nest that she has created um, on this. And it, you know, to me, as if it looked at, first it looked like a snowshoe, and then now as I'm looking, it's kind of, it looks like a giant um, dragonfly wing with the, um, with all the different pieces. And again, some of what you're seeing is some of the, the, the darker pieces are actually the shadow. It's not actually the piece itself. So this is one of those cases where the, it, it's all about the installation and how the pieces work with each other and the relationships between them and how the light hits them. And then the piece on the floor, because she was trained as a traditional basket weaver, this is called Vine Vessel. This is um, vine, wood, paper, and magnolia leaves. So she created the um, she created the basket form. She used the different vines, um, covered it in paper, and then she brought magnolia leaves from her um, from her home. And then we put them on the platform and kind of arranged it as kind of like a um, circle around it, around the circumference of the piece. Okay, these next four pieces are done by Becky Grasser. She actually teaches IT here over at Lakeland Community College. And these are tricolor gum bichromate, which is a decades, centuries old technique of creating photographic images. And she uses that with cyanotype and now she's printing them on aluminum. So it kind of gives them a little bit more dreamy look to them. And she 
uh, Becky travels extensively, so what, she, what she's able to add to the captures that she's able to, to find are these exotic locations. And then obviously seeing it through her eyes, through her lens as she creates the, the uh, composition in the viewfinder. Okay, this is a piece by Gail Trunick. This is called The Morning. And what's so cool about this, besides the creatures that she's, um, the, that, that she put in the front and the figure that, um, with, the, with the tears, is that the, the metal parts are actually gratings that she found um, while rummaging through an old um, abandoned cemetery. And, what, and what's interesting, the reason I put it with this grouping of work, because the next three pieces by Deborah Silver, um, these were created and inspired by um, Lakeview Cemetery here in Cleveland. And uh, Deborah is a 2021 graduate of the Cleveland Institute of Art. She's a non-traditional -tradi student. She just went back and um, she was um, defended her BFA. So the one on the left is called Stained Glass Garfield's Tomb One and it's handwoven cotton. The one in the middle is Mausoleum Window and what's cool is how she, the, the weaving structure that she created so that when she washed it, it made the background uh, war, um, parts kind of shrink down which made the other pieces kind of come out and she was able to stuff them kind of like a textile trapunto um, technique. And then the third piece is stained glass Garfield's tomb number one. And I just want to side note, I want you to understand that Deb and I go to, go to walks at Lakeview Cemetery all the time. It's one of those, it's a, one of the best examples in the country of what's considered a Victorian um, garden cemetery with the mausoleums and all the different landscapes and also. And so we go there, we were walking this summer into fall pr pretty much maybe once or twice a week and so it's kind of fun for me to see what inspired her and then how she translated it into her, her, her pieces. And then the two flanking pieces are kind of like negative positive, if you see. It's like it's dark on light and the other, the one on the right, is, is light on dark. And that's achieved by how she weaves it. Okay, this is a painting done by Laura Lee Hudson. Laura Lee is also a Cleveland Institute of Art graduate and she used to teach here over at Lakeland. This is um, The Magic Maker, and this is Oil on Canvas. And what's unusual for this grouping of work that she's giving me, you'll see two more pieces as we continue down the hallway, is everyone kind of, I've got to know Laura Lee as a jeweler, as a metalsmith, as a sculptor, and, and she said her first love was painting, so it was kind of, it's an, a nice, refreshing change to be able to show work from an artist I show on a regular basis, but show new work, work that's exciting to her, and and, and that's a fun color palette and has, you know, the, the undertones of, um, of the, you know, the organic elements. And as you see, as you walk through this hallway, you'll see it's kind of like the nature room. It's also, like I said, the bird theme is very prevalent this year. So now what you're going to see are three paintings from an artist from South Carolina, Mary Sanders Lazenby. She's new to this show, but she does exhibit in my um, skull show, so she did have some work in the skull show the past September. These are acrylic on canvas. So the first painting is called Four Day. And what's nice about her work is, is there's, there's types in the back, there's words, so she's using the words as symbols and iconography and typography, and sometimes she's just using it for the, the texture that the shapes create. Um, the one in the middle is called Vest Vestige, and then the third one is called Passer Protector. Okay, here's a piece by one of my favorite artists. Sorry, artists, I don't usually like to call out anyone specifically, but this is Betty Skafka. She's 93 years old. She's an inspiration. She's my shero. The fact that she paints every day. And she said, what else, what else do I have to do? And, and she said, she loves to paint. She loves to express herself. She likes to, she uses um, the, the paint and she puts a lot of dots in it. So she calls her work dotalism, which is kind of a takeoff on pointillism. But um, this is a piece called Ready for Evening. 
These next few paintings were done by Lainey Bachman. Lainey is an artist I met um, who's from Columbus. These four pieces are called are her sequence series, sequins one, two, three, and four. They're acrylic on canvas and then sewn sequins on them. And just, I love, you know, I, I admit I'm a little bit of a glitter girl. I love the sequins. I love the, the hand stitching. You know, I'm a textile artist myself, so I love the combination of the shapes and the colors, the surfaces, and then the flat pattern design. And then this is a painting from Laney called Paleo Bouquet, and it's acrylic on canvas, and you've got these kind of um, amorphic flower shapes where you can kind of see, you know, lotuses and other uh, fl columbine flowers, but then she takes artistic license and she creates some pods. You've got eucalyptus in there, and then you've got this little, these little trilobite guys that are coming in and out, <laughs> in and out of the composition. Okay, this wall is created by um, artist Laurel Herbold. Laurel has a studio in the West 78th Street um, Studio Complex, which used to be the American Greetings Think Tank. These are acrylic on canvas. This is another example where she created these three pieces. As soon as she put them up and, and started sharing images on social media, she had a collector that bought all three of them. So, you know, I'll be putting red dots on her pieces too. So congratulations, Laurel. So the piece on the left is called Signs of Life. And what's nice about these pieces is, is they're conceptual, they're, they're surreal, they have natural undertones, and, but, but there's, there's just something so very beautiful about these and nurturing and about celebrating life and, and, and um, just the, the textures and the colors. And the piece in the middle, um, she, I just think it's a beautiful lyrical piece with the, with the, um, the flowers and all. And then she said, she looked at it and, she, and I think she said her mom said, oh, it looks like it needs some birds. So, and you've got the undulating surface and you've got the spirals in the clouds. And then the third piece, oh, and, and that piece is called, and there it goes. And the third piece is playing with fire and you've got like these two um, mountain kind of shapes. You've got the, the organic tree shapes that turn into the hands. You've got the fire going. And then if you look closely in those little alcoves are little red eyes. So those are like, um, you know, the habitat of someone that's living in there. Okay, this triptych is done by Kathy Rogers, who is a, she lived in this area, she moved to Georgia, and now she's coming back, so we're really excited to have her come back to the, the, the tribe, our, our tribe of, of artists in the area. These are oil on canvas, these are red wing blackbirds. It's called Morning, Parted, and Desperate, and I just have to share this story. I used to call this bird the Cedar Point bird because I used to see it every May when I would go to Cedar Point and I never saw them anywhere else and then suddenly I saw it in a friend of mine's backyard and I said that's a Cedar Point bird and he's like no it's not it's called a red winged blackbird so it's kind of kind of funny to see this it kind of makes me smile and I just like to share the, the, the anecdote of the story. Okay now next we have a, um, another piece by Lisa Kenyon and this is bronze and this is called Moss Point, and it's 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 a um, you know kind of a symbolism of a, of an owl with the face and the wing without have showing every single piece's part. I mean, sometimes less is more. Sometimes you don't have to show all the different pieces. But again, what's nice about this is the way the light hits it, and you've got the shadows of the branches on the wall, and so it kind of helps the piece almost integrate into the wall and so it kind of become and like I said sometimes it's just a gift the way the lighting hits it and then this last piece on this wall this is done by Judith Brandon Judy is a, another Cleveland Institute of Art graduate and this is called this is not a test and it's ink charcoal and pastel on collaged and sized cotton pa paper and this is the first piece she ever did where she put pieces together and collaged them together you'll see kind of like a um, on the t maybe the top quarter of the piece, it's kind of an undulating um, tear that she, she created and then put them back together. She said this is the very first one she did of this series, and then she created some pieces that were like, I don't know, six by ten feet that were shown at L Ross Lesko's gallery. And then this is another one of those pieces. I don't know if you can see it, but on the kind of in the middle on the right, you'll see a silhouette of a bird. So when she brought this piece in and I saw the bird that was in there, and I realized I've been picking all these pieces with birds, it was just like, 
this is just sweet. And then, you know, she's got different words that are incised in the back. So again, this is another one of those pieces that it's a different experience if you're able to see it, you know, in person. And, and you know, the, unfortunately, the reflective surface, sometimes it's hard to translate it into a flat, you know, vi visual pixelated surface. But it's just a beautiful example of the pieces she does where she deals with atmospheric um, effects of clouds and weather. Okay, this next piece was created by Anya Khan. Anya relocated to Oregon recently. This is called Honoring My Ghosts, and it's mixed media. And then she also uses um, antique frames with her pieces. This next piece is created by Carrie Gortz. Carrie, this is called Rabbit Rabbit, and this is an ac acrylic and enamel on watercolor paper. I just love Carrie's work. I tell her she should be designing fabric. I would love to see some of these designs that she does as fabric. And she's got the rabbits, and then she's got the, the design elements in the back, which to me are kind of reminiscent and, and evoke dandelions. And I just read something about how the dandelion doesn't worry about it's being considered a weed because when it grows and it dries, people make a wish. So how, how cool is that, that it transforms from something that is considered negative to something that's, con that's positive and uplifting? Okay, here's another Betty Skufka piece that's painted in her Dadaism style. This is Madam Butterfly. This is oil on canvas board. And this, again, one of these pieces, if you go and look at the face, she painted the sweetest little face on this little butterfly. And just, I just love how lyrical it is. And, and Betty is just such a wonderful, person and, and she also hand paints her frames to kind of coordinate with the composition also. Now these next two pieces were created by Barbara Martin. These are actual scratch board. Remember when you were a kid you used to do crayons, put, put black ink over the top and scratch it away? It's, that's, that's a really simple, quick explanation of the technique, but that's what she does and she it does, she's incredible. These are um, antique frames. Sometimes she has to um, recondition them. Her husband is a woodworker. He builds violins. But this first one is called a white peacock. But just the, how she can get the, um, the texture of the, of the feathers and, the, and the, what's around the beak and the eyes and the little foof on top and that velvety black in the background is just spectacular. And then you've got this next piece, which is the, the owl and how she's able to depict that. Now that is scratch board um, with collage and the, the moon piece is the part that's collage. That's something that she printed up and then attached it and created the, um, the owl. And just the look on his face and the, and the beak. Owls, I've been, been kind of very um, sensitive and very drawn to owls these days. It kind of adds to my favorites of, you know, turtles and frogs and owls and, of course, cats. And then we finish this wall with another piece of Betty's called Cardinal. And this is oil on plexiglass. And again, she hand paints the frames so that you get a little bit, so you kind of integrate what's in the, in the um, frame, kind of works with the, what it, it's framing, you know, the, the depiction of the composition. And it's just nice to see a red cardinal because it is, we're, get, we're getting there, to, we're getting closer to, to spring and it's nice to see color after so much white snow. These are two more uh, paintings by Laura Lee Hudson. And I also just want to point out that these pieces were kind of inspired by looking at rock formations and looking at jasper and agate. So they're very, very organic and very abstract, but they were inspired by nature. Um, the first one is called Palettes and Patterns in Nature, number one, oil on canvas, and then patterns and palettes and patterns in nature, number two. Okay, this is a, a grouping of work by Janet O'Rourke from Oregon. I met Janet and her husband, Jay. They used to have a company, I think they still do, called J.O. Boxes, and we carried her work at American Crafts Gallery. And she just recently, in the past so many years, when she moved from Florida to Oregon, she started doing these woodland creatures, these fairies, and these are layers of wood that are then, um, there's pigment and painted wood, there's pyrography, there's layers of la lacquer, and then Swarovski rhinestones that kind of make it a little bit fun and glittery. So this first piece is called Woodland Creature Number Four, Orion. Next to that is 
woodland creature number two, Fiona Rose. Up in the top in the middle is the, this couple. It's called woodland creatures number three, Mr. and Mrs. Bunny. Next, we have woodland creature number five, Pixie. And we file the collection of the wall pieces off with woodland creature number one, Juniper the Fox. And now we're going to be talking, I'm going to talk a little bit about these cups. These cups are amazing. They're, they're hand turned, they're painted. Um, they've got pyrography, acrylic paint, lacquer, Swarovski rhinestones. You've got the, the one on the left is called the Masquerade Queen. And this grouping is called the Sparkle Nectar Teacup. I want to sip something out of a Sparkle ne Nectar Teacup and, and hold my pinky up in the air. And, and have little cakes. Uh, and then and the other thing too, you've got these little goblets and then they've got these sweet little saucers that has like a, a little organic flower that's in the saucer. Um, the one in the middle is called Lady Astra. And then the, the one on the right is called Bluebird of Happiness. And again, these are sparkle nectar teacups. So thank you so much for coming on the journey with me today. I hope you enjoyed this um, tour of the gallery. Like I said, the, the exhibition is up through April 1st, 2022 in the D building of Lakeland Community College on the main campus, first floor. We are wheelchair accessible. We've got a parking lot pretty close by and hopefully you can come in and see the work with your own eyes. So thanks again for coming along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me and the artists and their work.